Hi, I'm Barry McCockner, and it's time to trigger every NFL fan base 2023 edition. Now it's time for the NFC. Right after this, I want to take a moment to thank DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. NFL season is officially here, and I'm not sure about you, but my Sundays are starting to look exactly like this. Me, in my favorite team's jersey, parked in front of the TV all day. I've partnered up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the National Football League, to bring all new customers an exciting way to join in on the action right now. New customers download the DraftKings app, use my promo code Barry, bet just $5 and boom, $200 in bonus bets hit your account instantly. So don't wait any longer. Get some skin in the game and download the DraftKings app now. That's right. New customers who bet just $5 on any wager will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. Stay in on the action and use your $200 in bonus bets on DraftKings same game parlays. Combine multiple bets together from the same game for a shot at an even bigger payout. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code Barry, bet $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Barry only on DraftKings Sportsbook. Arizona Cardinals. Simply put, you are the worst franchise in NFL history. You've been around since 1920 when Hitler was still just a shitty painter in Austria, and you have nothing to show for it except a couple of Mickey Mouse rings in 1925 and 1947 that nobody alive except for Sister Jean remembers or even cares about. No wonder all you Cardinals fans slurp Larry Fitzgerald every chance you get. He's the only memorable thing your franchise has ever produced, and even then, he still was just an overrated compiler slashed accused woman beater. He only had like three great seasons in 17 years. I would put Devontae Adams over him all time right now. If you root for the Cardinals, it's because you have no ambition in life and will die alone and sad. Atlanta Falcons. You had a 25-point lead with 18 minutes left in the Super Bowl and somehow lost. You will never live that down, even if you win a ring with the run-heavy 1980s Texas high school football ass offense Arthur Smith is trying to implement. But you Falcons fans already know this, and you wear your pain as some sick badge of honor like it's something to be proud of, when it's actually the equivalent of being proud that you regularly piss and shit yourself in public. Everybody is disgusted by you and nobody respects you. Your last star quarterback was a choking dog and your second to last star quarterback was a dog choker. Congrats, losers. Carolina Panthers. Bryce Young is the Eric Fisher of quarterbacks pick first overall. He's smaller than a pair of A-cup tits and he doesn't have a strong arm, isn't a great athlete, and he couldn't even win a national title at Alabama. For fuck's sake, A.J. McCarron, Mac Jones, Tua Tagovailoa, Jake Coker, and Greg McElroy could do it, but not Bryce. I know how this will go. When Young inevitably sucks, you Panthers fans will all compare him to rookie Peyton Manning or rookie John Elway or some other all-time great quarterback who had a blood rookie year. I'm telling you now, shut the fuck up. Your team has not been relevant since 2015 and Cam Newton remains one of the most overrated players ever. I know you've all probably tried to forget about Super Bowl 50 and done enough mental gymnastics to consider it a blowout loss, but oh no my friends, your team had not one but two drives in the fourth quarter of that game, down six with a chance to win, and your goat Newton couldn't come through either time. Some might say he even dropped the ball. And that was actually the second Super Bowl your team had an amazing chance to win at the very end before spewing diarrhea all over the field. Thanks a lot, John Casey. Congrats on having Michael Jordan on your team. No, I'm not talking about the second best basketball player ever after LeBron. I mean the mediocre offensive lineman. You all know what this means, though. If you want to win a championship, you're going to have to sign Scottie Pippen. Also, your head coach is literally the third Reich. Chicago Bears. Speaking of MJ, the city where he won six rings against community college finals opponents thanks to Phil Jackson's system and Scottie Pippen, also has an NFL team. Did you know this? It can be easy to forget about since the Bears have been dog crap for the last 16 years outside of 2010 and 2018. It's one thing for Bears fans to think Justin Fields is good because fans always want to believe that their crappy young quarterbacks are going to be good someday, but Fields has somehow tricked a decent amount of non-Bears fans that he's actually good. The best way to describe Fields is like this. He has three or four plays every game where he looks like a top five quarterback in the NFL and about 25 to 30 plays every game where he looks like he doesn't belong in the NFL. Bears fans should know better considering they just went through this no, he's actually good, you're just a hater song and dance with Mitch Trubisky, but at least Trubisky had 2018 to look back on. Fields has nothing. If you Bears fans were smart, you would stop fighting me on this and lean in 100% on tanking for Caleb Williams. Also, much like the Ravens, the Bears should have about five or six rings considering the amount of incredible defenses they've had over the year. Instead, they've got fewer rings than the Buccaneers. This doesn't stop all of you Bears fans from acting like the 80s Bears were a dynasty
dynasty though. Walter Payton was a deeply flawed human being and his playoff stats suck. Dallas Cowboys. There's so much low hanging fruit for material that I could use here as an Eagles fan, like the NFC championship game drought or how much Dak and Romo sucked in big moments. But you Cowboys fans are used to that. So I'll give you something that I know will trigger most of you. Are you ready for it? Here you go. Jerry Jones is a really good owner. Oh yes, I can hear you seething now. He has given you the best stadium in the entire league. He's helped give your team more exposure than anybody else, regardless of results. He's kept the Cowboys cheerleaders as the league standard, honestly, his best accomplishment. And in all honesty, built really great teams. Just look at the Cowboys track record of talent over the last 15 to 20 years. Tony Romo, Dak, Zeke Elliott, DeMarco Murray, Terrell Owens, Des Bryant, CD Lamb, Amari Cooper, Jason Witten, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, Andre Giroud, Flozell Adams, Leonard Davis, Demarcus Ware, Jay Ratliff, Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, Terrace Newman, Trevon Diggs, Sean Lee, Roy Williams. That's a lot of good players. Way more than what most teams can say. Yet you ungrateful Dallas fans pretend Jerry is worse than Dan Snyder. Your team's lack of playoff success since 96 is not because of Jerry Jones. He's just a convenient scapegoat for all of you. Now, don't get me wrong. Jones is a piece of shit and I trust him about as far as I could throw him, but he's done his job well. Still, being 0-7 in the divisional round since Tupac died is a hilarious stat and I personally love it. Detroit Lions. Look at you, Lions fans. You're the darlings of the NFL with your lovable meathead head coach, your goofy quarterback, and good roster. Wait, what? The Lions have always been a joke, so Lions fans have embraced the suck, wearing their team's awfulness on their sleeves as if surviving all the bad years is something honorable. Detroit has never come close to achieving anything important since 1957. Case in point, John F. Kennedy has only missed one Lions playoff win. But now, though, all of the excuses for losing and underachieving won't fly. Lions fans always excuse Barry Sanders being a crappy playoff performer and career loser because it's the Lions. They excuse all of Matthew Stafford's mediocrity because it's the Lions. They excuse Megatron quitting at his peak because it's the Lions. Well, Lions fans, you are all cowards who are afraid of winning because with winning comes expectations and, yes, the chance of disappointment. For as much crap as I give some great players or teams for quote-unquote not winning more, at least they were actually there in the thick of things. You Lions fans prefer to remain on the sidelines like a bunch of beta cucks because you suck, just like your piece of shit city. Green Bay Packers. I know you all expect me to talk about how the Packers only have two rings with Favre and Rodgers, and while true, it's talked about so much it's lost its impact a bit. Instead, I'm going to go even deeper. That's what she said. Packers fans are arrogant snobs, and while some of that arrogance might be justified, as Green Bay has been one of the best teams in the league over the last three decades, it's all about championships at the end of the day. And for a town that proudly refers to itself as Title Town, they are desperately short on titles. No, not just since Favre joined the picture in 1992, but since the late 60s. How can you call yourself Title Town when you've got just two rings and three Super Bowl appearances over the last 55 years? Normally, two rings and three Super Bowl appearances is nothing to sneeze at, but I'm sorry, Title Town, quote unquote, should have more rings than the Buccaneers since Richard Nixon was president. Most of the Packers' dominance in championships came in the pre-Super Bowl era and bled over a couple years into the Super Bowl era, so they quote unquote technically have four Super Bowls, which makes them sound a lot more clutch than they've actually been. Basically, Green Bay is the Boston Celtics of the NFL. They won a bunch of rings in a shit era, then coasted on that reputation for the rest of their existence. Two rings and three Super Bowl appearances has already been done by Patrick Mahomes in his first five years. Heck, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick outdid Green Bay's last 55 seasons in their first four seasons together. Maybe Jordan Love will do it far and Rodgers couldn't, which is actually win multiple titles to justify Green Bay's reputation as a championship city instead of being a glorified Midwestern version of the New York Knicks. I doubt it though. Los Angeles Rams. As I said earlier, the only thing worse than being bad is being irrelevant. And despite winning a Super Bowl in the last 20 months, the Rams are somehow irrelevant again. Well, that is, unless you're talking about the worst defending Super Bowl champions ever, an honor which the 2022 Rams easily claim. Are there even any real Rams fans out there anymore? I kind of feel like I'm just shouting at five people here. Imagine winning the Super Bowl and then everybody forgetting about it 30 seconds afterwards. That's the Rams with Super Bowl 56. Historians will look back on 2021 and wonder how the fuck a career loser like Matthew Stafford won a Super Bowl. It was a fluke, a blip on the radar, flack OS. Most people act like the Rams franchise started in 1999 with the greatest show on turf. And while the greatest show on turf absolutely underachieved, it's incredible how badly the Rams underachieved in the playoffs in the 70s. You want to know what team led the league in wins from 1973 to 1978? Not the Steelers, not the Cowboys, not the Raiders, Vikings, or the Dolphins. No, it was the Rams. And guess how many Super Bowl appearances they had to show for it? Zero. They finally made 
made the Super Bowl in 1979 and choked away a fourth quarter lead. Both the 2001 and 2018 versions of the Rams scored over 500 regular season points just to put up a combined 20 points in two Super Bowl losses at Tom Brady. Fuck you! Your first ring came against a Jeff Fisher team, so it doesn't really count either. Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are still the best team in NFL history to never win a Super Bowl. The entire franchise is a legacy of failure. Since last year's video, they can now add losing a home playoff game to Daniel Jones after winning 13 games in the regular season to their resume. The best part about the Vikings failures are that they come in neatly packaged stages. There's the four Super Bowl losses from 1969 to 1976. Then there's the lost decade of the 80s, followed by the infamous 1998 choke at home versus Atlanta after going 15 and one. Then you have the 41 to nothing blowout loss to the Giants in the 2000 NFC Championship game while being favored. Fast forward to 2009 where your welfare stealing, allegedly, quarterback had your team on the verge of the Super Bowl before choking as he normally did. Then of course there's 2017 where you had a legendary win versus the Saints in the divisional round just to get skull fucked by Big Dick Nick and the Eagles 38 to 7 in the NFC Championship game. Immediately following that season, the Kirk Cousins era began, which has produced just one playoff win. Kevin O'Connell is an NPC. Justin Jefferson is not as good as Devontae Adams or Cooper Cup. Also, the Gritty is the most annoying dance ever, and anybody who does it should be arrested. I just checked again, and yup, Randy Moss is still not better than Jerry Rice. Rest in peace to all of the poor innocent birds who get killed by the piece of shit stadium you play in now. New Orleans Saints. Saints fans, you had first bowed Hall of Fame quarterback play for 15 years and one ring to show for it. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers got most of the crap for not winning more during that time, but you guys were even worse. At least Green Bay made five NFC Championship games with Rodgers compared to New Orleans making just three with Breeze. Breeze was a great quarterback, except of course for his last game where he played like dog shit and helped Tom Brady win another Super Bowl. Fuck you, Drew. But he was also a dink and dunk merchant and a stat patter and pretty boring to watch. Having six losing seasons is inexcusable for a quarterback of his stature, even if his defenses were terrible. Regardless, it's safe to say the Breeze Peyton era will be as good as it ever gets for you gumbo eating fat fucks in New Orleans. The only bowl Derek Carr is leading you to is the toilet bowl. He will cry uncontrollably in at least three post game press conferences this year, and you will rave about how much he cares, all just to finish with a mediocre record, which is only due to your division being so terrible. Carr is basically Kirk Cousins with eyeliner, but at least he's not an alleged sexual deviant like your annoying ass scrub backup Jameis Winston. Remember when your team's front office helped? cover up abuses in the Catholic Church? I do. Bounty Gate happened too. I remember. I don't even think anybody cares about Hurricane Katrina anymore, to be honest. New York Giants. Most of this video features franchises who did not win as much as they should have, but the Giants are the opposite. They have four Super Bowl rings and five Super Bowl appearances while playing in the biggest media market in the world, so they get hyped up as a blue blood franchise when really they're the NFL version of the Florida Marlins. Every once in a while, they fluke their way to a Super Bowl win before reverting back to being dog shit for prolonged stretches of time. In the 57 seasons of the Super Bowl era, the Giants have missed the playoffs 40 times. That's 70% of the time, by the way. They've won their division just eight times. They've made the NFC Championship game just five times. They've won a playoff game in only 10 seasons. They are 22nd out of 32 teams in win-loss percentage. Even since just 1986, the period in which they've won four rings, they're only 16th out of 32 teams in win-loss percentage. They are not an iconic franchise. They are a crap franchise with some fluke runs. Daniel Jones is still awful and nothing Giants say will ever change that. Saquon Barkley is a shiny new television in a burning building. It's cool to look at, but ultimately useless. Giants fans love taking the moral high ground over Eagles fans while they praise Lawrence Taylor, aka a guy who is a drug addict and a pedophile. Eli Manning was an average as fuck quarterback whose entire legacy is based on two games where he led his offense to under 20 points both times. He also tried to pass off fake memorabilia as legit and belonged belongs nowhere near the Hall of Fame unless it's as a visitor. Fuck the New Jersey Giants, that is your real name. Philadelphia Eagles. We finally get to my team, and if you think I'm gonna take it easy on us, you're wrong. We have one ring in our entire existence, and that is the only thing separating us from being the Vikings. There is so much disappointment in our history that it's disgusting. From getting blown out in the Super Bowl in 1980 by the Raiders, to not one, not two, not three, but four NFC Championship game losses in an eight year span during the Andy Reid era, two of which came at home by the way, to losing an absurdly winnable Super Bowl in 2004 to the fucking Patriots because of four turnovers, three of which came on their side of the field. We should have made at least four Super Bowls during that span in 2002, 03, 
03, 04, and 08 and gotten at least two rings. But instead, we won jack shit. Then, of course, there's last year when we were the best team in the league all year, got a huge break in the NFC Championship game with Purdy getting hurt just to choke away a 10-point halftime lead in Super Bowl 57. I love you, Jalen, but what the fuck, bro? You fumbled that shit without even getting touched. But even if Hurts hadn't had that fumble six, our historic pass rush turned into a bunch of scrubs, even accounting for the compromised field. Not one fucking defensive stop all second half and the special teams. Really great time to allow a guy who gets injured enough to apply for a fucking handicap sticker to return a punt 60 yards. Fuck! We scored 35 points in the Super Bowl and lost. We might get back to another Super Bowl because our team is currently loaded, but we will never put up that many points again. I guarantee it. Jalen Hurts is one major lower body injury away from becoming the next RG3. Eagles fans are fickle, sad motherfuckers with no respect for anybody. The most famous member of our fan base, EDP445, is a morbidly obese pedophile who got caught trying to hook up with a 13-year-old. We boo injured players. It's gross. I want to say we don't deserve our reputation as a horrible fan base, but we really do. Outside of 2017, this team has always let me down in every big moment, and because I'm an idiot, I will continue to get my hopes up every single time. We should have at least four or five rings right now, but instead, we have the least rings of any NFC East team. And this is with the Cowboys in Washington giving us 30 years to catch up. Last but not least, our newest first round pick, Jalen Carter, was at the scene of several people dying because he partook in street racing at highly illegal speeds. Just further, San Francisco 49ers are the most bipolar franchise in the league. Since 1970, you've either been Super Bowl contenders or absolute scrubs with almost nothing in between. It's insane how many times your team is whiffed on high draft picks, especially Trey Lance, since Mr. 28-3 and John Lynch took over, yet you Silicon Valley douchebags still have a loaded roster thanks to pure luck in later rounds. And worse yet, you still have not won a ring since 1994. Hell, even the Cowboys have won a Super Bowl more recently than you. You had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter of Super Bowl 54 with the ball and somehow lost by double digits. You had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter of the 2021 NFC Championship game and lost. You had first and goal at the opponent's seven-yard line, down five with two minutes left in Super Bowl 47 and turned the ball over on downs and lost. Once you add in the Kyle Williams fumbles in the 2011 NFC Championship game and the Sherman tipped interception in the end zone at the end of the 2013 NFC Championship game, I'd say in just the last 12 seasons, your team has pissed away about five rings. Last year, the one NFC Championship game loss you all bitch about because of Purdy getting hurt is about the only big game loss you've had in decades where you lost without choking. Hang the banner now. Only lost by 24 points after starting quarterback got hurt in NFC Championship game. You have a 4-0 record in the playoffs against Aaron Rodgers and still have fewer rings than he does since he entered the league. Talk about not being able to finish. Shout out Philip Rivers. You won 80% of your rings in the 80s, which is whatever, but only squeaking out one ring in the 90s with the historic amount of talent those rosters had is disgusting. Y'all lost at home in the 1990, Roger Craig, 1992, and 1997 NFC Championship games. So that's now, what, eight or nine rings in the last 30 years you've pissed down to drain? Damn, a franchise having five rings has never sounded more underwhelming. Just like Steve Young in the playoffs outside of 1994. Joe Montana was a frail system quarterback whose aforementioned backup replaced him and put up better numbers than him. The entire Kaepernick fiasco hasn't been forgotten about either, by the way. In conclusion, 49ers fans, your team is no different than the Cowboys since 1996 you just decide to choke in the NFC Championship game and Super Bowl instead of the divisional round. Watch your step when walking in San Francisco. There's a good chance you'll step in shit. Seattle Seahawks. Hawks fans, everybody talks about your team throwing an interception one yard away from repeating as Super Bowl champs in Super Bowl 49. Nobody talks about the Seattle offense having the ball twice up 24-14 and getting no points, or being up 24-21 and getting no points, or how the much-famed Legion of Boom allowed a fucking dink and dunk merchant to lead back-to-back -to -back touchdowns, all to bail out Tom Brady, of course, in the fourth quarter. This unfathomable choke has overshadowed many other chokes your franchise has had in the last decade, which all stick out like a sore thumb around your 43-8 Super Bowl win in 2013. Taking a one-point lead in the last 30 seconds of the 2012 divisional round versus Atlanta and still losing with a quote-unquote legendary defense was a dandy. Then in 2015, you lost by seven to a 15-1 Panthers team in the divisional round, a game in which the difference was another Russell Wilson interception, a pick six, and you only even got there in the first place because Blake 
Blair Walsh whiffed on an extra point length field goal in the wild card round. You got your back blown out in 2016 by the Falcons. You blew a fourth quarter lead to the Cowboys in the 2018 wild card round, failed on a go ahead drive attempt in the fourth quarter of the divisional round in 2019 to the Packers, then got blown out at home in the 2020 wild card round by the Rams, who were led by Jared Goff with a broken thumb. In 2021, Russell Wilson got hurt and you missed the playoffs, then traded him to Denver, officially ending the Wilson era. What do you notice about all of these losses that I described? That's right, there's no conference championship game appearances. The much Bollywood quote unquote Legion of Doom could only muster two conference championship game appearances? Hell, Mark Sanchez did that. But it gets better, Seahawks fans. You haven't won a playoff game where your opponent scored a touchdown since 2014. Specifically, the 2014 NFC Championship game, which was a fluke win thanks to Brandon Bostic and a prayer being answered on a two point conversion. Thanks to Pete Carroll, Brandy Love, being a conspiracy theorist, you somehow got a 30 touchdown pass season out of Geno Smith to remain respectable record wise, but I'm sure that putting your future hopes on a 33 year old quarterback who's been dog shit for 90% of his career will work out just fine, especially in a division with the 49ers. When Seattle isn't being brought up for its football team being a bunch of chokers, it's most known for the glorified liquid shit known as Starbucks coffee, outdated grunge bands, and being where Ted Bundy grew up. Congratulations. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Shout out to the 15 or 20 actual Buccaneers fans that are left now that Tom Brady has finally discarded your team like a used condom. Statistically, the Bucs have the worst win-loss percentage of any team in NFL history, and it's not a surprise. The surprise is that you've somehow managed to win two Super Bowls. Well, Tom Brady's devil luck and no crowds for road playoff games explains your 2020 Mickey Mouse ring, but 2002? I'm not sure how that happened. Without Brady, your team is back to being the irrelevant franchise it always has been outside of the late 90s, early 2000s. This franchise sucks so badly, you somehow had a losing record with Tom Brady as your quarterback. I never thought I would see that, not that I'm complaining. Mike Evans is back to being the face of the franchise now, a likable guy who might even be a Hall of Famer someday. One of the few things you Bucks fans have to look forward to is Evans continuing his 1,000 yard streak, but even if he gets another 1K this year, he still isn't the best receiver from the 2014 draft. That distinction belongs to Devontae Adams. Now that all the Brady bandwagoners are gone from your franchise, most of the venom has gone from me as well. You're too irrelevant to get upset over, and I would bet good money your head coach and starting quarterback in week nine will both be different than they are in week one. Washington Commanders. Washington, through years of hard work under now ex-owner Daniel Schneider, has somehow managed to become the model of both embarrassment and irrelevance at the same time. It's so bad that nobody cares they have three rings, two of which came in strike shortened seasons, so do they really count? As an Eagles fan, I can tell you Washington is the NFC East equivalent of the handicapped relative you've heard a lot about from your parents, but have actually only met a couple times at family reunions. No Eagles, Giants, or Cowboys fan even give Washington any peace of mind because they don't deserve it. Two playoff wins and only seven winning seasons over the last 30 years? That's right, they've had more team names than playoff wins since 1993. Once in a blue moon, they win a division title with a 7-9, and 9-7, and seven, or 10-6 and six record, go one and done in the playoffs, and then revert back to being dog crap. The only time in the last 30 years where it looked like they might actually have a future was the 14 or so games RG3 played as a rookie before his knee did the stanky leg in the playoffs. Snyder is gone, but for as awful as he was, he wasn't the one on the field getting destroyed all these years. Until Washington actually hits on a franchise quarterback, they will never be anything to worry about. And I can already tell you that Fat Baker Mayfield, aka Sam Howell, will not be that guy. But I'm saving my most triggering opinion for last, as any smart content creator would. Here we go. Sean Taylor is massively overrated because he died young. Could he have become a Hall of Famer? Maybe. Would he have become a better safety than Ed Reed and Ronnie Lott? Fuck no. He might not have even become better than Troy Palomalu or Brian Dawkins. Nobody is perfect and we all make mistakes. Being a Washington Red Commanders team fan is some truly sick shit. Right up there with murder and hiding the remote.